Mr. Warren, thank you for coming back, and please uh, take the time you thank want. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so too many families walk a tightrope to try to make ends meet, and that is why Congress established the child tax credit, to try to help families pay for essentials like diapers and daycare. <laughs> During the pandemic, then, Democrats then, increased the value yeah. of the CTC and expanded access to more low-income families. The result was one of the most effective anti-poverty programs ever. A record three million children lifted out of poverty. Child poverty slashed in nearly half within the space of a year. But congressional Republicans continue to insist on what they call work requirements for the CTC and other critical programs. I call these unworkable requirements. This is an old trick of using a maze of red tape to deny families the help they need while not actually promoting employment. Now, Mr. Dadagupta, you're the director of the Center for Law and Social Policy and an expert on poverty. So tell me, have work requirements, when applied to the CTC, to Medicaid, to SNAP, to TANF, whenever they've been applied, actually helped families find good jobs and escape poverty? No. Uh, no. Uh, data show that the CTC refundability doesn't stop parents from working. I just want to remind folks it's completely different than the old uh, pre-TANF AFDC program. Uh, it does not phase out dollar for dollar at some point. You do not um, uh, have uh, less access to health coverage after a year as you did then. So um, look, the, exper the main effect here of work requirements is to make it harder for people to access benefits. Yeah. Uh, we tried this in Arkansas with Medicaid under the Trump administration, and there was no impact on employment, but they did kick one in four adults off of health coverage, even though 95% were either already working or qualified for an exemption. So, so say that again. So they put work requirements in place, and the consequence was not to boost the number of people who were working at all, but you did lower the roles of people who got the benefits that they were legally qualified for. And you said, what portion lost their benefits? One in four adults. One in four. So all of this red tape has not helped people find work, but it has cost millions of people the help that they need and wasted the time of millions more. And it's not just families that get buried under this mountain of paperwork. The government actually has to administer it, and that's not free. So, Mr. Dhanagupta, in addition to costing families their benefits, can you tell us a little bit about what work requirements actually cost the government? Yes, uh, you're right, Senator Warren, administering these complex rules inevitably costs the government money. Uh, so, again, if we look at when the Trump administration tried to apply work requirements in Medicaid, uh, the Georgetown Center for Children and Families estimated costs for states uh, that were interested, or in the case of uh, uh, Arkansas, actually um, implemented the program, and they found that the costs varied from tens of millions a year to hundreds of millions a year in just implementing the work requirements. So this is not a path toward simplifying. Okay, so work requirements don't actually promote work, but they do cost millions of Americans benefits, and they cost the government hundreds of millions of dollars to administer. But there is one group that actually profits from these work requirements. Obviously not the government, it's obviously not the people who, who need the help. But instead, it's the for-profit contractors who are hired to administer these programs. Maximus, for example, has contracts in more than half of the states to administer eligibility rules for Medicaid, SNAP, and TANF. And they have raked in billions of dollars shoving families off their benefits if those families can't run through the maze. So Mr. Dadagupta, in your opinion, do work requirements for help anyone besides the private contractors that get paid to administer them? 
Overwhelmingly, no. They distract from a lot of the things that actually boost incomes, improve health, and other outcomes. We talk about the 90s often, the 96 welfare law. Well, we need to acknowledge the big boost in the earned income tax credit, child care spending, raising minimum wage, running a tight labor market, all of which I think were much more effective. Yes, private contractors are paid millions of dollars to administer these programs and have been busy, busy lobbying Congress. Uh, and states to expand the requirements in order to increase demand for their services. That money could be far better spent directly supporting families. I, I agree with you. We need to stay focused on policies that actually help struggling families and invest in our economy. And that means restoring an expanded child tax credit and opposing Republican efforts to try to tear another hole in America's safety net and use a maze of red tape that has been proven a failure every time it's been tried. Families need us to get this right, so I hope we can get this done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Warren, for, for